Thank you, good students. Feel welcome. Uh, today, just want to go through a short discussion on the cathode ray oscilloscope, that is the CRO. And this CRO uses cathode rays to display waveform on a fluorescent screen. The cathode ray tube, uh, the cathode ray oscilloscope has four main parts. That is the electron gun. It has what we call the electron gun the deflection system, the fluorescent screen, and also what we call the evacuated strong uh, glass envelope. Now, from this particular case, uh, I'm providing uh, the, the diagram to show this particular uh, figure known as uh, the cathode uh, ray oscilloscope. It has the four parts that we mentioned. These are uh, the electron gun, and the electron gun consists of the cathode, uh, it consists of the grid, it consists of the focusing anode, and also the accelerating anode. So those are the parts that the electron gun consists. Now the deflection system consists of two, that is the Y plates and the X plates. And then on the other side, uh, the, uh, the, the, the fluorescent screen is actually where that particular spot is displayed. Now from this particular case, we can actually look at what are the function of each particular part. Now, to start with the electron gun, this supplies, the function of the electron gun is to supply electrons, accelerates them towards the screen, and also focuses the beam to a point on the screen. Now, an electron gun, I've said it consists of three parts. That is the heated cathode, which readily releases electrons when heated, and then it also consists of a grid, and the function of the grid here is to control the rates of flow of electron. In other words, the grid uh, actually controls the brightness of the screen because it controls the rate flow of electrons. And then the third part is the cylindrical anode, and the function of this cylindrical anode is that they are usually maintained at high potential a difference relative to that of the cathode and this therefore make it uh, make it uh, suitable for accelerating those electrons towards the screen those are the function of the electron gun secondly we have the heated cathode now the function of this heated cathode is actually to release those electrons when they are heated to a particular temperature it releases to electron a process known as thermionic emission so that process of releasing electron as a result of heated cathode we refer to that process as thermionic emission that is the second part of uh, uh, what we call uh, the the electron gun. The third part, we have the grid. What is the function of the grid? The grid controls the brightness. It controls the brightness because it controls the rate flow of electrons. Are we together? Therefore, it controls the intensity and therefore the brightness. And therefore, it, uh, it controls the amount of electrons reaching uh, the screen. And then we have the cylindrical anode. Now, this cylindrical anode it's used to accelerate and focus electrons to a particular point on the screen. Are we together? And then we also have what we refer to this case as the second part, which we refer to this as the deflection system. And under the deflection system, uh, there are two. There are two. They can either deflect it vertically or horizontally. It consists of the x plates and the y plates now to start with the x plates what happens here that uh, the y plates are used to deflect the, uh, the electron beam in vertical direction vertical direction are we together that is the y plate the y plates are used to deflect the electrons in vertical uh, direction that is up and down as we can actually see there and then the x plate on the other side, they are used to deflect uh, the electrons horizontally. That is left, right. It swipes left and right, but the other one swipes up and down. When an input voltage is applied at the x plate, 
the spot moves along the x-axis. Similarly, when that spot is applied or the voltage is applied on the y plate, you realize that the spot will move up and down on the y-axis. So if we were to demonstrate that and draw maybe, we can actually have something that looks like this, that a simultaneous application of the input voltage at the x and y plate. So if we apply it simultaneously, then it leads to the movement of the spot on the screen in two dimension, producing a wave on the screen. So if X plate is on only, it will swipe horizontally. If it is Y plate only, it will swipe vertically. But if you put them simultaneously combined, then we are going to have a, a sinusoidal wave of that particular case that we can actually see there. That's how uh, the deflection system works. Then the last part is uh, the fluorescent uh, screen. Now, the screen consists of a glass material coated with fluorescent substance that when an accelerated electron hits the screen, it then glows Are you together. And therefore, that is the function of the screen. It glows when heated by an accelerated electron. Then we have the last part, which is the evacuated uh, glass uh, envelope. Now, this evacuated glass envelope, it, uh, it is actually coated with zinc, not zinc rather than graphite. It's coated with graphite. And the reason why it is coated with graphite, there are three reasons for that one. Number one is to allow the electrons to be conducted to the earth. In other words, it acts like an earthing. Number two, it is it shields the electron beam from an external magnetic field shielding. And number three, it accelerates the electrons towards the screen since it is at the same potential as the anode. That is the function. And somebody could be wondering, why is the glass evacuated? Mostly, it's actually we evacuate it so that we prevent uh, the collision of the accelerated electrons and the air. Uh, particle or molecules. Lastly, I want us to look at uh, the uses of the cathode ray oscilloscope. It can be used as a voltimeter and two, it can also be used to determine the frequency of an alternating a signal. Let's start with that a voltimeter. Now to use it as a voltimeter, ensure that you read the vertical displacement and then you multiply by the sensitivity. Remember, sensitivity means volts per division and it is sometimes known as the Y gain. Now I can give an example so that we see how to use it. Look at this particular example. They're saying a DC voltage of 50 volts when applied to the Y plate of a CRO causes a deflection of the spot on the screen as shown below. Now you can see from the resting point, this the, the, the spot is moving two and a half uh, steps. Now to get the, the, the sensitivity of this one, it is the voltage divided by the number of divisions. So the voltage is 50, the number of divisions is 2.5. So the sensitivity for this case is 20 volts per division. And that's how you can actually use this one. So once you know it is 20 volts per division, you can calculate the number of divisions and then you multiply by the sensitivity to get the voltage of any particular value that is given. What is the advantage of uh, using a CRO of a voltimeter? Number one, it can measure both direct and alternating current. Number two, it can measure very large voltage without get, uh, getting damaged. Number three, it responds instant, instantly, unlike the ordinary meters whose pointers swing momentarily about the correct position. And then the last one, it does not take any current due to its high resistance and therefore does not interfere with the circuit. And then lastly, we are looking at number two, where we are using this one as, uh, we can use this uh, uh, CRO to determine the frequency of an alternating current signal. Now, how do we do this? Of course, we know the formula. We use that F is equals to one over T. And if we can get the time, then we can actually substitute there. And then we calculate the frequency of that signal. I can provide an example so that we see there. 
Uh, the figure below shows the trace on the screen of an AC signal connected to the Y plate of a CRO with the time base on. So given that the time base control is 5 millisecond per division and the Y gain is at 100 volts per division, determine the frequency of the signal. This is how we proceed. First, we are going to record the time base as 5 milliseconds per division. So we can calculate the complete period. So from here to here, how many divisions? 1, 2, 3, 4. So 4 divisions, 1, 2, 3, 4. All together. So that is the time base control is actually at, if we look at the divisions, we are told it is 100 volts per division, determine the frequency. So we can actually calculate those number of divisions, which you've gotten the divisions being, uh, if we count them, we've count them to have, is it eight divisions? If you look at it, from where it started to have a complete wave from here, coming up to here to have a complete up and down isn't it so i can count one two three four and then once you get the four divisions you just say five times four which goes to this one and then you get that your uh your period is going to be 20 times 10 point negative uh, three once you have that one then you apply the formula by saying that uh, frequency is equal to 1 over time. The time is 20 times 10 point negative 3, and therefore the frequency is 50 hertz. Then we have the peak voltage. The peak voltage is actually the Y gain. Now you count the number of division upwards, and the number of division, if we were to count here, we can look at it. The number of division is 1, 2, 3. Upward is 3, and once you have the three divisions, then you can come say times the y gain or the sensitivity the sensitivity is 100 times 3 so the peak voltage is 300 volts uh, i appreciate for your time thank you for that and that's how we can actually use a cro the working of a cro and the application of that particular cro follow me for more interesting lessons and more of such thank you and be blessed